Hey there, welcome back to Marketing Matchmaker. I am having the best time with this podcast series of diving into um, my listeners and some of my networking partners' marketing strategies and where they're struggling and, and how we might be able to pivot their business and help them to really generate those leads that you that they're looking for and that you and the audience are looking for. So today I have Amy Duncan on the show. She is an approach. I love the way she puts her bio. She's an approachable and compassionate CFP professional. She's not your typical financial advisor. Amy organized process and warm approach, connect deeply with her clients to ensure their goals, their beliefs, their values, and what truly matters to them is brought to life in their financial plan. For over 20 years, Amy has helped by offering informed and objective advice. Her team, Duncan Financial, uh, uh, improves people's lives through successful planning and investing. You're welcome to check out her links. I will have them in the show notes uh, to connect with her. And Amy also has an exciting new project that she's diving into in this coming year. And so that's kind of where we're going to start. So first, Amy, thank you so much for being on the show. Well, thanks, Jennifer. I'm super excited to talk to you today. I know you're <laughs> going to be helpful and resourceful for me. This is not my area of expertise. So, so uh, let's start with a little bit of a description of kind of what it is you're doing, who it is you're trying to attract and and go from there. Yeah, absolutely. Um, so uh, we're an advice-based comprehensive financial planning team. And so who we are working with most often are couples. And my favorite are couples who are getting married a second time because they really are acutely aware of the fact that they need a plan around their finances and better communication. Um, and, you know, uh, I'm kind of the visionary person. So I have this idea of, you know, helping raise the collective consciousness, uh, the vibration, the collective con consciousness, excuse me. Um, and and so how to do that in financial services it seems like, wow, that's not exactly what most financial advisors are, are doing. You. But that is my goal is for purpose-driven prosperity. We're not just collecting money and investing it for, I don't know, to see pie charts and graphs change and, and get pretty. We're doing it to try to affect people's lives and make, the, make them happier and more satisfied. So um, when I'm working with clients, that's that's what I'm really focused on is the meaning and purpose in their life. And it's driving some of the projects I'm working on. I love that because it's true. I mean, especially I love the fact that you're so clear about who your ideal client is, that it's it's that couple that has stepped into possibly a second marriage and because they are more aware, I think, of of their what's going on in their financial world. And um, so I think that is fabulous. So this year you have a new project that you're launching. Tell me about that. Well, I'm calling it Head, Heart, and Harm Money. And um, what I'm envisioning, I'm really in the baby steps, although I am working a little bit on this with some, some partners. Um, and what I'm envisioning is a series of um, uh, self-guided retreat experiences, 90 minutes to two hours long that couples can do maybe on a monthly basis, quarterly basis that uh, allows them to start building their own financial plan or the or at least the foundation of a financial yeah. plan together. And that has a component of their, of their hearts and the practical head uh, information, because I think a lot of advisors and a lot of financial planning revolves around those pie charts and graphs, and we're missing out on the fact that there's two hearts involved here. Um, and so each of these mini retreats, I would say, would have a component um, that would satisfy each. Uh, the person in the relationship who is really data-driven and wants to get this plan cranked out, they love spreadsheets maybe, um, and they really want to be financially focused, but then the other person's being drugged there like they're going to the dentist. So that needs to include <laughs> some like compassion and some understanding with one another, what their money story is all about, how they've learned to be who they are when it comes to money. When you're sitting at the car dealership, what the other person is thinking, I need the warranty or the other person is thinking, I want to drive away with the red one today. You know? <laughs> a lot of times there's a, just a real lack of awareness that there's more than one way to think about money. And so right. 
opening couples up to that idea through a, an exercise or two um, that they can do on their own or so, you know, is, is the vision for those, those retreats. Um, I, I love the concept. Uh, they're, they're really about opening up communication lines in a, in a marriage or a relationship. If, if you're pre-marriage kind of thing, yeah, combining uh, finances either way, you yeah, know, you're either way. Yeah. Those, and, and those are conversations that a lot of people don't have. So, right, right. Which is apparent, which is why 22% of the divorces are money related. So. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. So when you're thinking about, um, about the ideal client for this, is it, is this, is it the same as who's in your practice? Those people that are going into their second marriage or. I guess that's where I could use a little bit of help because yeah. I know that um, when I speak about purpose-driven prosperity and meaning and money story, to some degree, that's attracting, um, it's not attracting the wrong client, but it's attracting a a lot of people because that's so unique in the industry. And what makes it challenging is uh, that we're primarily an investment firm, you know, Uh, we need to be working with clients who aren't focused on debt consolidation. I love, you know debt snowballs and avalanches and all those things, but we're really needing to speak to the people that have already gotten through that and they have uh, the ability to save. It's the higher income earning couple who wants to plug away for the future. And the the problem I'm seeing is I I don't know how, I I don't want this product to be um, only speaking uh, for scale purposes to the person work with us i also want the more prosperous people to enjoy these experiences too i don't know if i'm speaking to the wrong audience but i feel like somehow through this process i'm going to have to uh, make the client self-diagnose whether they're ready to implement a plan with an advisor or if they're just at the phase of hey i need to really crank away at debt because i'm not going to be able to afford a financial plan or why should i be putting money towards a financial plan if i'm still paying off enormous student loans you know what right. I right mean? I think so if we think about for most people, um, when we talk about funnels and and all of that kind of stuff, one of the key things that I I talk to my clients often is what is it that they need to learn, hear, do, or see in order to be ready to take the next step into your world. So this product could be that, right? It could be that um, farm for what, you know, for a lack of a better term of bringing in those people that are financially interested but need to get ready Mm -hmm. to step into your world i hate ignoring this there's so many uh, i don't know unscrupulous people in our industry that it's like you will have this supposedly discovery conversation with a potential client and really all you're trying to discover is how many assets they have and if you want to spend your time on them and i hate that vibe altogether right. and I hate the fact that I can't serve everyone I can't though like so I, I so this that you're exactly right it's I want the I want the retreats to have value for those regardless and then maybe help them decide uh okay is debt our priority right now because I understand I have so much compassion for the fact that that drives a lot of people to think they want a financial plan right but uh, at that point, the plan is just get that debt paid down so you can actually exactly. save and invest uh, and for the future. So, uh, yeah, I think you're probably right that this could could help. It, it definitely and can. Maybe not have to reject a bunch of people, you know what exactly. I mean? Exactly. It's kind of like a um, almost a pre-qualification process. Yeah. Right? Uh, I mean, I don't want it to feel slimy like that. I want it to feel like I'm offering tons of value, uh, but it's not, it's a, I yeah. don't, I think I want to, um, work on that, that thought process of, of it being slimy. Pre-qualification isn't slimy. Like it's, it's necessary and you sure. are providing value to them. Like regardless, this sure. just opening the lines of communication with your significant other around finances in general is valuable. <laughs> so, so I definitely, Thank you. Think, Thank you. um, I definitely think we, it can be a process of pre-qualification on the other side of that. We can also use it as more of a, when you think about the people that are ready to invest, what are they struggling with right now? Like what is, what is the, the 
thought process behind them. They have the money, they know they should, but what are they struggling with? Yeah, no, that's, it's, it's honestly, it's time and organization. They, especially younger and middle-aged couples these days, they might have old 401ks from employers all over the place. They are, uh, they've got their own business and they're working really hard in it and on it. And they just don't have the time to get all these pieces together. And they feel this, their fear is that they're missing out on the opportunities that are going to make them prosperous financially in the future. And so they feel like time is slipping and, oh, and, they, and they're getting a little panicked that they're not where their friends are, honestly, or that there's all these boxes that aren't being checked off on a, uh, to make them feel confident. And then so, that, so there's that tactical piece. And then there's this other piece where they just want somebody to ask for financial advice. Like they don't want to go to their mom and dad every time they have a question about money. And they want to talk to somebody who really knows their situation uh, entirely so that they can feel like they're getting uh, tailored advice. Like uh, just, hey, do I rent or lease a car? Or, I'm sorry, do I buy or lease a car right now in this interest rate environment? What's the, uh, is this, you know, is this the right time to refinance? I know it's not, the rates are up. What do I do? You know, right. being able to call somebody they can just go to and ask financial questions and, uh, and get answers that they know they can trust. So when we think about the program that you want to develop, the the retreats or, or anything along that line, um, how is it going to solve that problem for them or at least get them to the point where they can feel like they have enough to fix that problem? Yeah. So I don't know that that's, that's is where we're, this is, this is why we're talking because, yeah. <laughs> uh, because I love that you're uh, identifying this being a self, like a self diagnosis or like a filtering part, but I don't know that the person who's not ready for that is not going to be able to get advice from me, right? But the person who identifies themselves through those retreats and they, they've they created, like, I'm, for example, uh, one module might have them discussing their money story, maybe what was the, who who taught them about money in their life? It was either their parents or grandparents, right. and how are they the same and different? There's the heart piece. And then the head piece is that together they might create their net worth statement. And so then they see that their net worth statement is a positive number, then that would be an indicator that they um, might be ready to move forward with a, a relationship with an advisor. And that relationship with an advisor not only would help them invest their money, but it would help offer them that, that outlet for advice. Now, the person who has that negative net worth number is maybe going to recognize that that's what they need to focus on. And so I do want to offer uh, ideas, tools, and suggestions for taking care of that problem. But they're two different problems. Yeah. You see what I mean? Yeah. That being said, if you start the process at the top of like having the conversation and building that out within the sequence, you know, within the email sequence or the delivery sequence, however you're doing that, you can also ask them questions about their net worth. Like, is your net worth in the positive or negative and giving them advice, you know, on, mm -hmm. on what to do next. Um, but I think, I think what we want to focus on, at least to get people in the door through this, this process, uh, this retreat is going to be like, it has to be about where they're at right now, right? Because they're they're really realistically, most people have, I have a problem. When it comes to money, it's, you know, very specific, but they can't see beyond that. So we, if we're looking to bring in the people who have the, the net worth to actually step into a financial advisor role, if that's what you're looking to do with this is to make it more of a lead generation source, then we need to speak to them directly right? We need to speak to how they're feeling right now. They may not have a lot of debt, but they know they're behind in retirement. They know they're behind in, and it may have something to do with whatever in life has thrown at them, but they know that they're not on the right track in order to hit those numbers. So you really want to focus in on that kind of messaging if that's the type of person you're, you're going to attract. It will still attract the people who are have a lot of debt because once you start talking about you're behind, everybody's going to feel that, right? Yeah. Yes, you're right. I think you pinpointed it. What circumstance? 
put them there. If it's debt, then um, I don't want to ignore you. I want to help offer you tools. And, and these retreats are still good for you because you're, you're enhancing the communication with your partner. Right. Right. Um, right. But and if, if honestly, it can still end up being, they come into you. It just may be six months, 12 months down Correct. the road. Exactly. Let's get you in a healthy position so that, that it is right for you. So I don't, I don't want to use it as a, as I mean, as a marketing funnel and I mean, Hmm. How do you say that? I want, I would like it to fill the pipeline with right. uh, people who have work to do and help them do it in a way with in a scalable way, or you've identified you're at the spot. Now it's time to have one-on-one. -on -one. Yeah. 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 I think it's really about dialing into that messaging, that struggle of what is, what is their biggest fear around their financials right now? Like, what is it? that they're, they're really thinking about and struggling with right now in order to take that next step. If they're like yeah, me, yeah, yeah. If they're like me, it's, it's, it's like you're behind, you feel like you're behind, like you're, behind. you're, you see, you see all of the people, well, especially with social media, let's be honest. And people lie on social media, the by the way, dynamic, but it's there. And so, but it is, it's it is very much a comparing yourself to the people that you you hang out with right or or see online and under and you you feel that like okay I don't have enough retirement I don't like we can't retire next year or next month or whatever that might be um mm -hmm. and we're ready to sit down and and establish those goals like really dial that in so and the pressure is the resource of time. It's slipping through the cracks. And we know we need time to get where we need to be. You know, we've only got our, our energy, our time, and our money. And one of those is out of whack, you yep. know? And that's yeah. exactly it. So I think we really, we dial in that messaging for those. And I think you also, I would, my own, again, this is my personal kind of, because I think I am one of your ideal clients for this process. Um you're looking at that 40 ish range. Like that's when yeah. people start feeling like, Oh my God, I'm going to be 60 <laughs> or even 50 well, or whatever. I mean, it's going to, time is just slipping. Our kids yeah, are mostly grown. I feel that daily, right? Like, exactly. Exactly. Uh, I think it, I think it really think it is when you hit like 40 ish that you're looking at the, just the sands in the hourglass. Yes. <laughs> Yes. And you're starting to, you have worked for 20 years. So you're like, I don't want to do this forever. I want to, or maybe you do, but you want it to evolve to a place that feels purposeful and meaningful. And that all requires money. Let's be honest. It'd be yes. great if the, all the purpose and meaning in the world could be driven without money. And there may be some Zen masters who say that it can, but for most of us, uh, having that resource in line is going to sure boost that level of happiness. It's proven. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. And it's, it's about what, like, I think this retreat kind of model is really about helping them understand what they want. Like, what do you want your money to do for you? Yes. And are yeah. you there yeah. now? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. How do you want to employ the tool? Uh, so many people are stuck in have, giving money a personality, right? It's it's lording over you because of that pressure, you know, right. uh, but really we need to get really comfortable with it just being a tool and how we're, we're employing it. Right. So, yeah. 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 I think, I think that's going to be, I think it's really dialing in, in that messaging. That's going to be the first key to that. And then okay. I know that there are a lot of like rules and regulations and things that go around advertising when it comes to the financial industry. Uh, like, yes. <laughs> most regulated besides doctors, you know, oh, it's right. Like, yes. Right. So whatever, whatever process you take to market it, you have to take it through your attorneys and all of that first to make sure that you're not violating anything. But I think creating some kind of lead magnet to bring them into the retreats, and it can be as simple as a quiz, right? Starting out with, you know, are you financially ready for your next 20 years or, you know, some, some question like that, where you can get, and it, it'll help in several ways. One, it'll help you to delineate where people are at before they go into the, the retreats. Um, it'll also help you to 
dial in the messaging for those people mm -hmm. that are at the beginning, the middle, or just, you don't even need the retreat. You just need to get on a phone call with me kind of thing. Yeah. Um, I like that. That's, I hadn't thought of that. I was almost thinking that the 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 lead magnet would be a, a shortened version of these exercises or something, but maybe that's giving away the farm. It I think it is. So I think you the the biggest thing with the lead magnet is we need to create a gap, right? Between so mm -hmm. if you give them too much of the retreat, then they're coming back going, why do I need why do I need this? Okay. But the quiz can actually give you like a complete overall, it's beneficial to them because they can get a clear assessment of where they're at right now. It's beneficial mm -hmm. to you because you can see where people are coming in and where they're at and what type of value you can give them. What type of, you know, maybe if they are severely in debt, they need this long retreat. If they're not so severely in debt, but they have a little bit of debt maybe, but the, it's very manageable kind of thing. Maybe they just need the short retreat, like, you know, one or two of them, and then they're ready to talk to you. And if they're no debt and ready to go, maybe the retreat becomes more of a in-person kind of interaction or, you know, rather than a, a maybe it's a conversation between the the three of them and you can do the same thing like the same right. treat type of material um that's good. no that's great i really appreciate that that's i'm gonna have to think about that you know it'd be really cool i don't know if it exists but would be a an assessment that aligns right next to his and hers right next yes. to each other because then you're creating that tension between the partners too. Like yes. he totally thinks this and i totally think that oh my god and then there's that self-awareness that my husband and I are, or my wife and I or partner and I aren't on the same page. Yeah. Crap. Yeah. So and it's definitely, they can both take the quiz. Like it could be because you are mostly attracting partners, married couples, the quiz can be set up. So wife, husband, or partner A, partner B, whatever you want to call it. Um, and, and yeah, you can send them the same results. Like this hmm. is, this is what you and your partner and let them discuss it because it's going to be. It's going to be a joint decision on whether or not they step into the retreat. It has to be because if one of them wants to do it and the other one doesn't, that it's not going to, it's not going to work. And yeah. the whole point behind it isn't going to work, but if they can see mm -hmm. in compare in a really comparative way, what, how they feel about money. Like some of the questions can be your mindset behind money, your mindset around your current finances so that they're kind of aware, opens talking points. Um, Ooh, I like that. Your so, current so what budget. Someone do like me who can't, uh, we find someone to help us build that. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, that's, that's where we come in for people. We can, we can definitely, but yeah, we, you just, you work with either someone like me or another person out there that designs quizzes and can help you get that set up. Now, again, we also have to run it through law, all those things, just to make sure that we're within all of those boundaries, um, the regulations and stuff. Cause that's yeah, always what boundaries that I wouldn't yeah, no, no, no. And then just so you, you know, it's, uh, yes, we're so regulated, but when you're talking about real simple concepts, it's generally pretty open. It's me saying, I promise you're going to make 7% on your portfolio this year yeah, okay. because bonds are attractive and you, everybody needs to be in bonds. You yeah. know what I mean? Okay, good. Because yeah, this is making assumptions or promising returns. Yeah, this. this is really just delineating where they're at financially, like in their yeah. own mind, in their own relationship. It can be, hugely just the quiz alone having the side by side of this is what I think this is what my spouse thinks that can be hugely valuable to people without even the rest like they may like that's that's an amazing piece of value in and of itself Jennifer have you seen something like that before is that easy to build a side by side tool because you might have one of them at work just wanting to I mean it would have to be a yes and like if, if it's just you know Typically, I got to be honest, it's the wokish kind of wife, self personal development oriented wife who's initiating the process. So I'm, mm -hmm. when I have to be careful about my markets, yes, it's couples, but typically it's, and this is typically, it's very general. I'm being I'm generalizing, but typically it's coming through the woman who really is like, I need a plan. I need to feel more secure. And a plan would make me feel more secure. So it might be them sitting at their, you know, taking their little 10 minute 
you know, fish around the the, moment where they're like, so I wanted to not exclude the people who didn't have the partner there to take the quiz. So I think, yeah. So if I think what, what, what I would suggest is like the verbiage on the landing page of the quiz or whatever comes down to, if you are a solo person, take this quiz. If you are a couple, you take this quiz, your spouse takes this quiz separately you will both get your answers and then you can compare them kind of language could we do it so that they take it at the same time yes are they going to take it at the same time no no right Right. yeah exactly like you said the wife may be the one that takes it and then she looks at her husband and's like you got it like we just i need to know where you're at kind of thing and pushes that yeah so it needs to be like forwardable exactly which okay. is simple. So she's like, that's what compl- I've done, but yeah. not, but not offer her results because you want the results to be like you don't want him to know what she said before he said. Right. Yeah. Mm, that sounds like a hard, a hard thing to put together. Certainly out of my, <laughs> you know, all the things we think as business business owners, especially mid small to mid sized businesses, which could be defined in so many ways. We think I can do that. I I could do that, but should I do that? That one, I can tell you, I should not. Yeah. It's not as hard to put, well, obviously this is what I do in my world, but um, the process isn't as hard as you think, because really what ends up happening is they take the quiz. The first email they get from you is an email that says, Hey, share this with your spouse and have them take this quiz on their own. Your next email will be your results. And so the second email sends them the results and that way they can forward the quiz to their spouse without that. And you can do it on the the final thank you page, all of that kind of stuff, just so that they can forward that quiz to their, their significant other. Do you feel like some that kind of thing? Because when you're saying this, I'm thinking, Ooh, that's a lot of follow-up. Can that kind of thing be automated? It's completely automated. Like- it's all completely automated. Yeah, okay. we just... We set up the quiz using a quiz. There's a million quiz platforms out there, but we set up a quiz using the, a quiz platform. That way we're not trying to build an app or anything like that. That's way yeah. too much Just work. Out but, of- yeah. yeah, then the quiz platform will be linked to your email management service, whether that's Active Campaign or Infusionsoft or whatever it is you use. Um, and then all of the emails are just automated because they can autofill. Like we can mm-hmm. set up the the automation so they autofill. So that first email is really, you know, hey, this, then the second email goes to them with their answers. A third email is like, did you talk to your spouse? Have they taken the quiz yet? If not, here's a reminder for them to take the quiz. And then you can dive into their like value for them, even if their mm-hmm. spouse didn't take the quiz. So, mm-hmm. um, so yeah, all of that's going to be automated and, and then it, leads them over to the retreat to sell that or depending on their answers, like if- I'm in. Exactly. Oh, bam, brain explosion. Good, Jennifer, this is super helpful because I hadn't hadn't thought of going the direction of a quiz. This is, that's, yeah, your genius is showing up today. (laughs) I appreciate that. (laughs) Yeah, yeah. It's helpful when it does on your podcast. Like being called a genius. I call myself a genius all the time when I figure something out. I'm like, oh, I'm a genius. Um, so yes, <laughs> I appreciate it. Yeah. So what are like what question what other questions do you have around this? Hmm. Well, you know, those uh I have, in my business, I hadn't been taught prior and I and I've been told by others who run other types of businesses, like all these nurture sequencing. Yeah, campaigns and these. I don't have any of that really. I mean, I have I have one for my current marketing funnel, but I'm realizing as you're as we're talking that my marketing funnel isn't pinpointing the problem. It's trying. It's it's telling them there's a problem and then solving it, and that's not a good. That's not that's not great. Yeah, uh, that's not that's if you're solving the problem, what do they need you for? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I guess I'm not solving the problem, but I'm telling them more about the problem and why it's a problem in our industry, and that's not really helping them create the problem in their household. So yeah. yeah so I, I can definitely see where that needs work. And and it's you know five, six years old. So and I don't actively there's all these problems. It's like you can have all these beautiful tools, but if I'm not actively driving people to the funnel, it's just not working. So exactly uh, there's some broken stuff going on here. <laughs> <laughs> um, I think that's a way a lot of business owners, especially those that do most of their business via referral, which 
I think is right. It's that's exactly who uh, that's exactly who's coming to us. uh, And that can be that can be good or bad, because, as you know, I'm not going to take my most valued client. And if they give me a referral that's a little off, uh, I'm, I'm not going to say no. And so then I end up with a book of business of people who love the people I love, but that don't necessarily aren't quite ready for where we are. So right. that's where the that's where the whole is. But that's where I'm leaking is I don't I don't want to disrespect the, the person who gave me the referral or the referral. I want to offer them some value and our discovery experience does that. But then if you're not right for us, then you're kind of left on your own until you come back again and you're ready. That's okay. where the retreat comes in my friend, right? right? Like that's your downsell of, you know, for lack of better terms, if they're not ready to step into being, you know, a partner with you in the business, then you can offer them the retreat as a secondary option. Yeah. And then I guess then I guess the questions, of course, that keep coming, how do you, how do you learn how to price that the downsell? I don't want it to be, you know, out of reach for people, but I'd also like it to be maybe a, and it sounds like if we can set it up to be pretty automated, then it could be a stream of income for me. And, yeah, and absolutely. And so absolutely. I don't, I don't know how to price those kind of things. Who do you do? What, what do you so- do? To do that? First, we start looking at industry and whether or not there's anything even remotely like this in the industry. And if there's not, then we look at other coaching programs because that's basically what this would be, right? Like it's, it's, it would be a course for lack of a better term for that. Right. I'm just calling it a retreat because I think it's sexier. We're (laughs) going to light a candle and play some soft music while we talk about money. So we're not feeling like we're. Right. Exactly. Exactly. It's like a date, not a, you know, not a terrible conversation. Exactly. So, so pricing would then come down to looking at those money mindset coaches and Mm -hmm. the auto kind of uh, courses that they have available, looking at their pricing um, and also looking at the value that you're going to deliver. So it's, it's a little of both. You know, mm-hmm. you, you don't want to overprice, like you don't want to price yourself out of a market. Um, and while we want to make it affordable, we also need to make it valuable enough that they're going to do it. Okay. That's the price point. Like if they're going to invest people, like if we go, okay, just do $97 people that do a 97, buy a $97 course, put it on the shelf. Right. Mm-hmm. Like it has to, in the game. Yeah. There has to be yeah. skin in the game because the whole point of this is so that they can get to the next step in their life, whether it's working with you or going someplace else or just getting out of debt. It's really about getting them the next step in their life. So we want them to have enough skin in the game that they're going to do it. I visualize um, as you're saying this, and I have thought prior about this, you know, that there are it could okay you could go two ways you could do monthly subscription to this so we have a monthly money huddle or money date right there you know what i mean um or you could do um a series of five classes and you can purchase the each module individually for x dollars or you could buy them all for x dollars but either way this feels like an entirely separate business and and i and i I, it would have to be automated it would be automated yeah and then you'd have to continually communicate to them so that even if, unless they opted out, of course, either, even if like three years down the road, they fi- feel like, ah, oh, we're finally ready. Here we are, Amy, let's sit down and talk. Yeah. Yeah. And so it is kind of a separate business. Like it is, it's a secondary stream of income and can be a really great way to bring in that my coach calls it a pillow money, right? While you sleep, money comes in while you sleep. So I mean, yeah, I'll take that. It could be a fantastic way to do that. Um, It can be completely automated. I don't know that it's a completely separate business though, because it is your funnel. Like it's just another step in your funnel that eventually, hopefully these people will come into being a client down the road. It may be six months, it may be three years. It's whatever, wherever they were when they came in will help you Mm -hmm. determine that. I know that this is right because it feels scary and exciting. <laughs> you know what I mean, like that feels scary. Why? One of the reasons it feels scary is because I am so busy. I hate that mantra. Like I'm so busy, but you know, like I am. Well, yeah. I'm, I've got client a robust book of clients. Right. Um, poof. So 
when you think about this as a big picture, um, I guess I'm curious, like, and maybe if, if this isn't the appropriate place to ask, let yeah. me know, but like, how much is this going to cost me to build this? Is this going to be a $20,000 investment to get this secondary business going? And how do Not I necessarily. It depends on like, there's a whole lot of pieces that we'd have to determine before I could give you an actual ex an accurate <laughs> pricing on that kind of thing. Yeah. Um, but not necessarily. It could be somewhere between five and 10 K. It could be, you know, less than that. It all just depends on what pieces that you want someone else to do, what pieces you want to take on yourself. The biggest determining factor is going to be your time in order to record whatever the retreat is or whatever those retreat products, like you're going to have to be able to invest that time. Okay. So, so yeah. Yeah. Yeah, all that time. I was wishing I could clone myself and <laughs> one of us be the creative idea, visionary, inspiration person. There's absolutely like, that ability work. when it comes to the leads, the quiz, all of those <laughs> kind of things. But the actual like, hey, your course piece of it, I'm I'm I don't know enough about your industry to help you do a course around that kind of stuff. I get you, I get you. Right? Um, so yeah, I mean, that's, that's kind of, uh, the way that we, we look at that. Um, but yeah, it's, it's definitely doable. If nothing else, even if this course that you wait, you know, till you have a little bit more bandwidth, the quiz to get people in the door, I think is going to be incredibly useful for you because yeah. you could even for those people that are referring people to you. You could send them a qu uh, the quiz, like the referrals say, hey, before we get on the call, I need you and your your spouse, or if it's just one person to take this quiz. So I know where you're at before we can even have a phone call. Mm -hmm. nice. And that'll give you a whole different perspective of, of who you're getting on calls with. So you see that then um, as we're mapping this out, you see that as step one. Yeah. Because I, I guess you could do the quiz as the funnel itself yep. and then just ignore the people i'm trying to then take the next step and, and exactly. offer value to them too okay yeah. so you the quiz itself okay good the quiz I itself like i think is step one i think that's going to be your biggest um it's the biggest bang for your buck you get to yeah. weed out the people that aren't a fit for you because even for those clients that like you love and the person goes through the quiz and they're not a fit to work with you, you can still get on a call with them and say, you know what, you're not quite ready for X, Y, Z. If you have the quiz, great. Or the course, great. You can sell that to them. If you don't, you can find another financial advisor that might be a better fit or another yeah. suggestion, refer them out so that they're not quite, you know, if they're not ready for you, then you're not spending hours trying to get that information <laughs> on discover yeah. calls and all of that kind of stuff. Yeah. I mean, our, our discovery call is so value packed, but it's 90 minutes long. Right. And I, have, I mean, it, and I have, it doesn't happen all the time, but I have those conversations with people who you can tell in the first five minutes, it's not a fit, but I'm just not made up of the rudeness to not give them what. Yeah. Them. Well, and the other thing is, is you could sell the discovery call because it is so value packed, right? So mm. if someone is in debt and you know, like they've taken the quiz and neither them nor their spouse have the money, the financial bandwidth to invest, maybe that 90 minute discover call is your retreat. Maybe that's that what you, yeah. yeah. Hey, yeah. Whatever X amount of dollars, a thousand, five hundred, twenty thousand dollars, whatever that is that you I mean, I know, but you know, you have three thousand dollars in debt. Can you pay twenty thousand for a new like, meet? I know, won't be that bad. <laughs> but yeah, whatever the the amount is for that ninety minute call, and you know, going into that, that this is the conversation you need to have with them. You need to get yeah. them ready to start paying down their debt. To start, quite frankly, that's still going to be. A funnel, right? Because if you've given them all of the tools in that 90 minute call to go off and do it on their own, they're going to come back. Good. Good. Hmm. Are we implying that the retreat's not necessary? It may not be. I'll do you know how you so want to work that. If, if, if you, I love the idea of the retreat and it can be done, but if you don't have the bandwidth to create it right now, this is an alternative. I love that because uh, I don't, but I want, but maybe in the interim, we, we, we build a quiz 
we and I like that I've never thought of charging for the discovery experience, but maybe if you've filtered yourself as in category B, you can have that to help launch you on the process of creating your own plan. Then I've not been a dick both ways. You exactly. know, exactly. I mean? Exactly. Oh. You've made your long-term client who loves you happy because you've given this referral a lots and lots of value. They just weren't ready yet. And everybody's yeah. happy. It's a win, win, win for everybody. Yeah, I'm glad, and then, you, I'm glad you're saying that. that. I mean, and you really think that like it sounds like valuable? Yeah. I, oh, absolutely. I pay to I sit want. down like, for, with someone for 90 minutes to tell me, you know, what to do in order to, to get my finances under control. I would totally pay for that. Um, and we also have two service models, right? Because we're an investment firm and I work with my husband, uh, which is so attractive to the couple because they're working with. Exactly. And yeah. Um, and he is the, he's everything you expect in a financial advisor. He is building the portfolios. He's doing all that. So we have a sleeve of clients who just hire us for, for that and aren't right. by space, comprehensive planning clients. They work excellent together for the right yeah. client. But we have a, a sleeve of clients that we were referred and they have small accounts and that's okay. Um, but maybe those folks are also candidates for this because yeah. we are managing your money, but you do, you do want my time as a financial planner, but I can't give it to you because I've got to work on the higher net worth people, which makes me kind of pukey. I don't like that, but it's the truth. You also have the understand. ability to have an advice based side business, side hustle, right? Where yeah. they are, they may be not, maybe they're not ready to invest. They don't have the financial band bandwidth to invest, but they need somebody. So it, it turns into more of a coaching kind of consulting type of thing, but people are paying for those services rather mm -hmm. than you giving them for free. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, it all, it all just depends on how you want to work that along mm -hmm. the way you can build out this course. Right. As you have bandwidth, you can, you know, month one, you sit down and you're like, okay, retreat ABC needs to be done. And you work on that. And then you just start building it out as you go along so that at some point you can turn this all automated. Yeah, I know. This is super helpful. I, I've got uh, a lot to think about and it's great perspective. Thank you. You are very welcome. I have had so much fun today. Um, this is my favorite part of my business, honestly, <laughs> is doing these kind of things. So I appreciate you coming on and being so vulnerable about your business and where it's sitting and, and your marketing um, and having this conversation yeah. with me. <laughs> I mean, part of it being on the call I, hey thanks invite me anytime you need to talk about problems that i can <laughs> solve them for free i love it <laughs> i know there's i know there's more behind that and uh you'll certainly be hearing from me after i digest <laughs> i appreciate that as well for all of you out there that feel in the same position that amy is where you've got an idea but you're not sure what to do next I have the solution for you. Head over to yourmarketingmatchmaker.com and sign up for one of these free strategy sessions. The only requirement is you have to be willing to go live on air with other people knowing what your problem is. But if you're willing to do that, I'm willing to invest my time in helping you grow your business, increase your income, and scale your impact. We'll see you next week. Thank you for listening to the Marketing Matchmaker podcast. If you enjoyed this episode, I would love to hear your feedback. Please head over to Apple iTunes and leave a review so we can hear from you. And if you are a coach, consultant, or online course creator who are looking to grow your business, increase your income, and scale your impact, Connect with me at yourmarketingmatchmaker.com. I look forward to hearing from you.